Um, could I just maybe clarify a couple of things that I've, I've heard said today um, and to put it in context of the, the meeting because um, it might have been lost in, in the course of the exchanges here. Um, the committee wanted to get the detail of this arrangement some time ago, 2022, um, when we sought the attendance of various um, members of government, uh, secretaries, uh, general and so on. And um, we received some written submissions which have been helpful to our understanding of, of what went on. Um, you decided during the course of that time that you would not attend. Um, you refused to come before the committee. And just for the record, the committee was then forced, they agreed uh, as a committee, to seek compatibility. Uh, and to insist, through compatibility, that you would attend and give as a witness here to the committee. Just, so just for clarification, Chair, lest there's any confusion here, I'm volunteered to come to this committee today. Well, no, coming, I wasn't, I'm, I'm I wasn't coming, compelled. I'm coming, I'm I wasn't. Coming, I wasn't compelled to come before this I'm committee. So to I volunteered to come before this committee. That should be noted now, please, in the record. I wasn't compelled to come here. I came here voluntarily well, to sorry, help I'm you. I'm coming to that point. Thank you. I've allowed you to say what you had to say, and I, I want to clear the facts here. So we had to seek compatibility, which was granted to the committee. I want the, those that are listening to understand that the clerk then contacted you out of courtesy to say we had compatibility, but that would you like then, understanding that, to come uh, voluntarily to the committee. So it's the first time in a long time, first time that I can remember, that the Oireachtas uh, gave compatibility powers uh, to a committee. And it's extraordinary that a Secretary General of a department as significant as the Department of Health, with the experience of the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform, should have to be compelled. So certainly you're the first Secretary General that I know of uh, where agreement had been reached to compel you to attend. So that, that's the background um, to the uh, committee. Now others have come before it in relation to this issue and they have clarified what they knew or what they didn't know. So I can say from Martin Fraser's evidence as the Secretary General of, to the government, uh, that he did not know the detail. That's the evidence that I heard uh, when he came here. Uh, and that others gave a similar reply, they didn't know the detail. Now we couldn't verify any of that at the time, because as I said, you wouldn't uh, attend. And that makes the work of the committee very complicated because we don't have all sides. And you're, you're someone that has always said, give me a chance to answer, I may not give you the right answer or what's expected of me, but I'll tell you what I believe the answer to be. Um, so it set out, in my opinion, a very, very bad example for the other secretaries general and indeed for the young civil servants who maybe aspire someday to become a secretary general. Would you not agree with that? Uh, I have nothing to comment on that, Chair, sorry. I am here to talk about uh, these matters that you wrote to me about, so I am not in a position to talk about these are procedural matters. That is for you and the committee and others. It is not a procedural matter, Mr Watt. So, I am asking you, I will ask you again and then you, you, you so, can decide what to say or do. So I, I, I've asked, no, I have asked you, is it not a terrible bad example from a senior civil servant that this is the way we end up at this committee here today? Uh, Chair, you know the background to this discussion. I'm not going to get into it here. I'm not uh, here to talk about the procedures of your committee. I'm here to talk about the substance of it. Uh, just for the record, though, in case people think otherwise, this is now the fourth or fifth occasion that I have spoken about these matters in front of the Dáil Committee. I have discharged uh, my obligations to the public and to you and your colleagues uh, several times, and I'm discharging it again. I'm very happy to, 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 okay. to do so. And I think to suggest otherwise, I think it's very, very misleading. Yeah, well, first of all, I didn't suggest otherwise. I gave the facts 
uh, as uh, the committee members would know them, as you would know them, uh, you've given an answer, and I just want to say that, that answer, like the other answers you've given today, fall well short of what would be expected of the standard of a Secretary General of a department, a senior member of the civil servants such as yourself. So that's that question, not answered. In the uh, exchanges that you had with other members here, it was said to you that it was €2 million Euro a year that was committed to this secondment. And you were making the point that no, this €2 million was committed through the health, um, the HRB Health Research Board. So it wasn't going to the college at all. It was going, the fund was going to the HRB and that they could decide then what they were going to do with that two million. Is, is that, do I understand you correctly? Yeah, Chair, so the intention was that the money would be allocated to the Health Research Fund uh, and they would then run competitions and that money would then, through those competitions, end up in the different uh, universities that were successful for, for the competition. Okay, so the only... And as I understand, that's what's, that's what's subsequently uh, transpired. The only level of funding then that you're suggesting that we're talking about here is, um, is Tony Hulan's salary. That's it. The, 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 only, the, the only fund, the funding that that will be commit that will be ring fenced for Trinity. Yes, is the part as I referenced with Deputy Doherty, with the part that would fund uh, Dr. Hulan's salary. Yes. So that was the only ring fenced funding. It had nothing to do with the two million. It was a ring fenced. Uh, the, the, the intention would be that from the the higher allocation of research funding for this area, that that would part that would fund in part fund uh, Dr. Hulan's. Uh, so, there are other elements to this. Uh, no, no, chair. Just, just, just to clarify that for yeah. me. Yeah, that would be that so would have been the, that the would have been. Two million the would go to the HRB, and out of that two million, the salary of uh, Dr. Hulan would be paid. Yeah. So th there again, there were the details that that. No, no you, you, yeah, yeah. you you yeah, commented that's, that's, on this that, today, and that, I want to get this right. Yeah. So that that so so in effect the the. the and again, we didn't get through all the details of this, but in effect, Chair, yeah, that's, that's, that's bro broadly what Right, so it wasn't for uh, Trinity at all, at two million, is what you say. Um, the commitment in, the, in some of the correspondence here is that the department would pay his salary. I think there's a misunderstanding about that chair uh, uh, when this all broke. So by who? The, I think some of the, the media coverage. Media. Like, so, so the intention was that the fu the fund would would go from the, the obviously the fund would go from the vote of the department the vote of the department to the HRB, and that would then fund the, these activities, including the, the salary of Dr. Hulan. But it would not go directly from the HRB to Trinity. That, 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 it, could, that, it, could, it could be dispersed to lots of universities. Yeah. So it wasn't for Trinity at all? The, the, oh, the, the fund was not for Trinity overall. No, exactly. Okay, Chair, that's right. what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. And then, uh, in another part, as I said to you, how then was his salary to be paid? Because uh, in, here we're told in, in this report uh, that his salary was to be paid by the Department of Health. The report we're discussing today. Yeah. No, that, 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 wasn't, that wasn't correct, no. So what, what, what was to happen? So that, the, de the detail, we, we set this out, the details had to be finalised uh, exactly how we would do it, but the intention would that, that, that Dr. Hewlett's salary would be from the, 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 the commitment of, of additional funding for research. So as part of that, that would fund Dr. Hewlett's salary. Uh, okay, so whatever it, HRB decided to allocate to Trinity, they were expected to pay his... Salary, yeah, out of out of that. But again, just just to, th those details had not been worked out as we as we set out in the letter of intent. They had to be finalised. So all those details weren't weren't worked out. And you mentioned earlier on again about the period for this secondment. It, we, we spoke earlier about the five years max, the six months, and so on. So for the period of his secondment, ten years because it was, it's 2032 or something when he retires. So for that period, this particular ring-fenced funding was to be made available, including his salary, 
and that that would be paid to him by Trinity, but that they would get nothing else. So, so Trinity, could have, Trinity could have, I'm sure, would have competed for the funding like everybody else and could have been involved. But again, and they're different, as I understand it, there are two different schools in Trinity that would have been involved uh, in this who, are, who have an interest in this area. But the details, uh, as I said, uh, had to be had to be finalised in terms of how it would actually work. But yeah, in broad terms, Chair, that's, that's, that's the, that was the intention. Yeah. So your decision then really was only about um, Mr. Hulhan's salary, is it? In, in effect, is it, if there's any dedicated funding for a particular, yes, that's right. That was it? Yes. And you were going to, not you, but it was then going to be allowed, the HRB was allowed then to allocate whatever funding it decided? Yes. Why then was Trinity saying Absolutely. that it couldn't, it couldn't afford this proposal? So they, they were establishing a chair and they needed, they, they obviously said, if we're going to establish a chair, well then how is it going to be funded? Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure they're, they're had other fund, they have significant funding outside of the, the Exchequer funding, so uh, I'm sure that could, have been, that could have been funded, but that was the, that was the policy. And no, they were saying that they couldn't afford it. Yeah, so they said. But ultimately, Chair, like we, wa we wanted, the, the policy intent here was we wanted the CMO to, to take up this role, or a similar role. We, like we were in favour of this, we thought it was a good idea. So oh, no, I, I don't the, the disagree. The spending of the money was a good idea. This you know? is not about whether it's a good idea or not. This is about, and, and it's not about, you're saying, in the public interest. We're here in the public interest. I, I, I know that you, know, you, you all of you are supposed to be in the public interest mm -hmm. also. Um, but I, I just can't fathom how you say it got mixed up in the media reporting then about this two million. Is that it? I think there was a lot of confusion about the... Through the, the media. I think there was a lot of confusion about how this reported, Chair, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, okay. that's all history. How, how, did you, how did you reach the figure of two million? Because there was one... Now, I know you made reference to it before. Yeah. But there was no costings on it. Yeah, so it was... There, a, there, there was no... Sorry, I just want to... Yeah, there, yeah. there was no background analysis, apparently, that we can refer to that would show us that this one million... Or the two million was better. Well, obviously, two million is better than one million. Yeah. But, but how did you decide it? So, so we ultimately wanted to uh, show intent that we were serious about investing in this research, investing in this capacity, sending a signal to the different teams around the university system that we were actually serious about funding this research because they have to get teams together, they have to get people together, probably international people coming in, uh, dedicate staff. So we wanted to send a very clear message to the university sector that we were serious about funding this particular research stream in the way that we've that's so been done you, in the past. Are you less serious when you offer a million? Uh, uh, yeah. Because I, I would consider that to be a big figure. I, like, in, ter in terms of uh, the, the sort of research funding in other countries, in terms of the cost of the pandemic that we've gone through, uh, you know, I'm not suggesting a million is not a significant sum of money. Of course, a million is a, it can do a lot with a million. Uh, but uh, the intention was to, to uh, give it support and to give, it, give a strong commitment that we were interested in getting the different teams to work together. And I understand that money has been allocated now. I don't know the, the outcome no, no, of the process. No, no, don't, don't, don't confuse the story here, which is, is maybe it's my fault um, that I'm, I'm sort of confused about some of the drawing conclusions from what's happening now and what went on back then. Mm. Because when, what went on back then in terms of this was nobody knew the detail. It took a long time for that detail to find its way uh, to paper. Protocols were spoken about here in terms of how the decision was reached. I don't know any other example in any other department where two million would be committed to, and it says that Deputy Doherty went through this with you earlier, it says that in the letter. You committed to two million. You committed to it for the period of this position up to Mr. Houlihan's retirement. You committed to paying him his salary up to the point of his retirement. Do you accept that now? Uh, so I, ac I accept that we, we, we did commit to the, the additional, we, we, we set out uh, an intent to enhance the, the, the research budget, absolutely. No, 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 uh, we'll, we'll, keep it, we'll keep it simple. I'm asking you the question, you commit, did you commit 
to 2 million per year plus his salary including a salary. As including a salary as part of this so yes, it's a yes or no answer. I, 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 don't, I don't think it was a, a legal commitment, if that's what you're suggesting. It was an intention to enhance the well, capacity. Well, what's committed? What does that mean? So it was a letter of intent. The letter of intent, like any letter of intent. We intend to do something, subject no, to no, all no, the details I'm committed. I, I intend to do something is different than mm. I am committed to do this. So the letter of intent is what the letter said. That's the title of the letter, uh, Chair. That's what the letter. So it's a letter of intent to do something. It's not a final legal letter agreement. of intent. It's not a final that I am approval. committed it's not a final to doing this. Yeah, because Trinity College says it's not in a position to fund the proposal. That's what they say it's here no, no, in this report. No, no that's not. We're commit. We're com we're doing it because we're committed to enhancing research across the university sector. It wasn't. No, that's what you're saying today. That's what we said at the time in the letter. Of I intent. don't see it anywhere at the time. We clearly said in the letter of intent to the HRB would be involved, that it would be inter-institutional collaboration. We clearly say that in the letter of intent. Okay. So, Mr Fraser then, um, sorry, there's another, this is, I went to quote this on page 9, it says here that it is further proposed that the salary, etc., will be paid to Dr Hoolan by the Department of Health until his retirement in 2032. Now you're saying that that's not the case, that the salary was being paid out of the two million. Yeah, so those details had to be established, but that would have been that would have been the understanding. But we didn't get yeah, into all the details. Yeah, but if you were getting, if you were had a letter of intent, you would be covering every single angle of this, so that there would be no one misunderstanding on either side. No, but we do say in the letter of intent that the details were to be finalised. We said we were going to appoint each party was going to appoint somebody to finalise the details and draw up then ultimately the legal agreement. But based on the fact, based that on there the generality of here, the letter of intent, yeah, twenty million committed over the years. Well, that's that's up to the if it depending no, on no, the no, no, it's not again. up to anyone. It's in the but, 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 letter. But 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 it's not a legal commitment now, deputy. Like it's a letter of intent. It does if say, you put a, something into a letter of intent, a letter of intent, it leads to a commitment. It may lead to a legal commitment. Yes, yeah, so it may lead you to a you agreement. you are going to lead this to a commitment through your letter of intent for two million euro a year. Plus, uh, sorry, and that would be twenty million plus for the ten years. So we is that correct? We were hoping. No, just tell me yes or no. Is no, that correct? We were hoping the letter of intent would lead ultimately to a legal agreement in respect of the funding. And between the moment the letter of intent was signed and the legal agreement, we'd obviously the minister would have to approve it. We'd have to figure out exactly what that meant in terms of the estimates for twenty three and beyond. Yeah, that was what we were trying to achieve. But you did not write that down. Well, you did not what, tell Martin Fraser, you did not tell the Taoiseach at the time, uh, Martin, mm, mm, you said you told Deirdre Galan, you did not tell well, Deirdre now. Galan. I've gone through all this. Uh, you have, but I, I have to say, I've gone through Mr. all this Watt, already now, Deputy Adam. Oh, sorry, let me finish. Yeah. Your answers fall way short of the standard that I would expect from a senior civil servant. And I'm sorry to have to say that. Well, now, Chair, uh, I'm here answering questions in good faith here. I'm not, quite sure not if it's I'm not quite sure if it's appropriate for you to comment the way you've just done about me answering questions in good faith here. I don't think it's appropriate. Well, to quote okay. yourself, I don't think it's appropriate I'm entitled now. to so, my opinion, aren't I? Yeah, but you're meant to be chairing the committee, though. I'm are doing not that chairing, too. Are you not meant to be chairing the committee, though? I, I, am I not doing that too? Well, I don't think you're doing it impartially now if you're going to be criticising me. I'm not criticising you. I'm telling you what I feel in relation to the standard of the answers that you're giving chair here to committee. this committee. That's my duty as chairman to insist that you give the, the round, comprehensive answers, and you fail to answer Deputy Doherty. I don't agree. I don't agree I failed to answer Deputy you, Doherty. You, you, you have an, you've answered a question, uh, Mr Watt, to the extent that you are dismissive, arrogantly dismissive, of the report. And I find that shocking. And, and your answers are, well, you know, uh, that's my opinion. I mean, I, I, honestly, I, you, I, would, you, I think, you, Chair. I think, Chair. Now, you're not in a position to personally criticise me. You're not meant to, at committees, personally criticise witnesses, as I understand it as chairperson. Now, I may be corrected here, but I don't think you're meant to personally criticise somebody. Not criti I came, acted in good faith, endeavoured to answer the question, Deputy Doherty. If I didn't answer Deputy Doherty's question faithfully. Uh, uh, Happy to go, go again. You know, I'm okay, honestly wait, wait, answering sorry. the questions well, then, here. So it's not fair to suggest now 
But I'm not here in good faith answering the questions. I just don't accept I that. I didn't I'm suggest sorry. that. Well, you did. I sa- I sp- I, I'm speaking to you about the level of, of standard expected from a senior civil servant and the fact that members of this parliament have asked you certain questions that you have blatantly dismissed. And in fact, at one stage you said to Deputy Doherty that in the main you didn't accept this report. Then later on you said, oh well, you know, certain elements of it. Let me just clarify what I said in relation to Deputy Doherty. I said there are findings in the report I don't accept. Absolutely there are findings in the report I don't accept. There are other elements, the recommendations are, obviously the government has made a decision on that, which is fine, and the Minister has, has indicated he's going to push ahead with that, that's fine. But there are certain uh, aspects of this, they're not findings, they're conclusions, whatever way I describe them, which I don't accept. But that, anyway, that's just to clarify in case there's any confusion about it. Yeah, okay. Can I just ask you in, in, in my final question in this round anyway, in relation to um, the, the Tarnish to now um, supporting the position of uh, Deirdre Galan, the Minister for Health supporting the position uh, of Deirdre Galan in terms of her commentary, which was pretty, uh, a, a pretty stiff um, rebuke of what you were saying, uh, that you're now accepting that she is correct in what she said and that you were wrong. But does it all not place you at odds with some of the most senior politicians and senior civil servants in government? And are you at all concerned that there is doubt being cast over the manner in which all this was done? The, the latter part of your question, of course, there, there are lessons to be learned, but the previous, the, the, the first part of your question, no, is the answer. You, you know what? You don't, you're not concerned. We're entitled to different views. Well, no, I know that, that Jen. I, I'm asking you. So you're not concerned about the, the, the fact that Minister Donnelly, what he said today at the Health Committee, or the Tarnished previously, or indeed uh, Deirdre Galan. Because she, she, Deirdre Galan was pretty clear in her position. And your answer today is, oh yeah, I accept that. Is, is, that, is that an answer? I've given the answer, Dep- Chair, to it already, so nothing for it to add on that matter. Okay, so you, you were going to, to put forward your, to answer Deputy Doherty's previous question. I think you suggested that you would do so. I've, I've answered Deputy Doherty's questions, I think, Chair. I, I'm, well, that's uh, what Deputy Doherty is to say. So, Deputy Doherty? So, I, can I just ask, Chair, are we almost concluded here? Because, because I've been here now for over two hours, so I think it's standard practice for me to have a break. Oh, can so. I have a break? Yeah, no problem at Thank all. So we'll break, break now for, what, what do you want? Uh, 20 minutes, maybe? 20 minutes, Mr. Watt, certainly. I, I only have